The original Super Mario Maker was such a monumental title for Nintendo. After a ton of criticism for their own Mario games, they essentially said, okay, fine, make it yourself. And it was great. You just sit there and tap the screen a bunch of times and then bam, a Mario level happens. It was so much fun. But it didn't have slopes, so naturally a sequel had to be made. Yeah, this game is pretty awesome, and it's no surprise that Nintendo would try to capitalize on the original game's success by releasing a sequel on a more successful console. You know, the original Super Mario Maker, despite being on the Wii U, was a big deal. It was just that the console that it was on was a big flop. Regardless, Super Mario Maker was one of the more consistently played games on that console. N not anymore though, that game is dead. Like the first game, Super Mario Maker 2 allows you to make the stage of your dreams based on different Mario games, each style offering their own little variations to the standard running and jumping. Whether it be based on specific power-ups like the raccoon suit in Mario 3, or Yoshi being exclusive to World and U, or different movesets like having the wall jump in Mario U, there are upsides and downsides to each available style. And yes, now you can slide on not just one, but two different types of slopes, I'ma just go ahead and buy the game a second time, that sounded so good. But not even just the slopes, man, there are so many more options to play with now that it almost feels overwhelming at times. Boom Boom shows up as an extra boss option, there are new helpful tools like Twister that can make for more interesting platforming, Bonsai Bills are here, now angrier than ever, Oh good. The on-off switch is gonna be huge, I'm telling you. This can be applied to a handful of different gizmos, leading the way for much more quick response action, or even a new take on puzzle solving. I really like those too. Now, even when playing solo, you can play as Luigi, Blue Toad, and Toadette, not just Mario. Clear conditions can be added to stages, requiring you to complete a task before being allowed to finish it. And on top of these six themes returning from the first one, ground, underground, underwater, ghost house, airship, and castle, some receiving new tweaks like color and background changes, there is the addition of desert, snow, forest, and sky. And this applies to every single gameplay style, even if the Source game never had them. They all come with their own unique theme song as well. Some of them are brand new tracks from series composer Koji Kondo. This makes the original Super Mario Bros more interesting than it's been in years. Oh hey, look at that, it's the Super Ball from Super Mario Land. Yeah sure, let's add everything at this point. I need to see the bunny suit return pronto. Water is no longer exclusive to the underwater theme now, it shows up in the forest as well, and you can even adjust the rising tide. This applies to the lava in castle stages as well. <sighs> okay, we're still going. You can customize auto-scroll directions now on top of simply the speed of it. Sublevels, the areas that you get to by entering a pipe, can now be vertical, finally allowing for areas where you go up and down as opposed to just left and right. And there are a lot more sound effects and musical options to play with as well to give a little bit of an extra spice to your levels. And they clearly answered my wishes, they scrapped that annoying rave music from the first game as well. Alrighty, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about getting a third copy now. One of my favorite additions is by far the Angry Sun from Mario 3. Oh, and don't get me wrong, I hate him just as much as the next guy, but in the NSMBU style, it's not angry, it's the, it's the mildly content sun instead. Something about this is, is just hilarious to me. And if you are, by any chance, selfish and you think that 10 different themes just isn't enough, let me introduce you to the moon. Yeah, you may have heard of it. Well, it's quite simple, you swap out the angry sun for the mellow moon, and suddenly you've unlocked variants to all 10 of those themes. Adjusted aesthetics, calm remixes of the standard music, and a brand new gimmick associated to each. Upside down underground, the forest water is suddenly poison. Low gravity when you're up in the sky. One up mushrooms are now evil and want to kill you. Oh boy, just what I need is that scary image before going to bed. So yeah, simply put, they added a ton of stuff here on top of what was already established in the first game. More variety just makes for a better playing and creating experience, and it shows here. How about another Mario game then? Alongside the four returning gameplay styles, there is a brand new one based on the Wii U game Super Mario 3D World. Sure, that game was 3D, not 2D, if the title didn't clue you in. Meow. But it was built like a classic 2D Mario game, so in the transition over to Mario Maker, 
It actually fits in great. This style offers up a ton of unique elements, a bunch of original enemies, the cat suit, new platforms in the way of track blocks, Meowser as a big boss instead of Bowser, and a Koopa in a car that you can knock out Grand Theft Auto style and then take it for a spin. Nothing of the sort existed in 3D World, but I don't care, this is the closest to a Mario Kart maker that we're probably ever gonna get. Things are so different though that you're unable to swap the gameplay styles on the fly like you can with the others, which is fair. Typically, adjustments do have to be made on a game-by-game -game basis, but with the other four, it's possible to more or less translate mechanics easily between them. 3D World is so radically unique just based on the cat suit alone that you have to stick to that style from start to finish if you want to make a complete level. But by Nintendo putting in a Mario game that's different than the traditional four, and by there very clearly being additional space in that submenu, we are totally getting extra styles with unique mechanics sometime down the line. Maybe Super Mario Bros. 2 will finally be under the spotlight again. Maybe even Hotel Mario. The sky's the limit. I'm really not much of a creator, but I can at the very least appreciate all of these additions in terms of being able to execute your ideas. The building interface is solid enough as well. It's basically impossible now to recreate just how fluid it was using the Wii U gamepad without removing the image from the TV, but this gets the job done just fine. I did manage to complete one level though that I wanted done by the time this video went up. It's called Sky Trials, it's a challenging little romp in the clouds with optional red coins to go for. If uh, if you want to go ahead and, and play it, that would, uh, that would be, that'd be really, really cool, uh, thank you. As someone who really only cares about the playing levels part of this game, not the making levels part, all of the additions and changes made here to the core mechanics make this a much more worthwhile investment than the first game was, which, admittedly, after a while, did start to feel a bit repetitive. But here, man, five different gameplay styles that are pretty different than they were before, 10 different themes, each one with their own gimmicked moon variants, and a ton of new tools? It's, it's not even a competition, man. This sequel easily wins. They still don't have the BAM at the end of Super Mario World's levels, so you know I'm tempted to give the game a 0 out of 10 because of it, but you know, for now, I'll let it slide. For now. Actually, even though a lot of stuff was improved, a good amount of charm is lost here as well. No more Easter eggs on the title screen, Weird Mario is no longer an option, and that... You know what, that I'm actually okay with. And the biggest loss of them all, the 8-bit costumes. The fact of the matter is the costumes were cool, but they did lead to an overload of stages based on Super Mario Bros. 1. Objectively, the least interesting one. So with the elimination of those and the dozens of additions, I, as the player, end up experiencing a wider range of stage styles, which I am a big fan of. This is also probably why the 100 Mario Challenge was replaced with the Endless Challenge. The reward for completing 100 Mario Challenge was a costume, so with those gone, now we have an endurance-based challenge instead. A much better alternative in my opinion. Although you still can unlock costumes, but just for your me instead. And thank goodness, because I'll be damned. I look fabulous. Also, now if someone creates a crap stage with an obstacle that you never saw coming, you can now go ahead and boo them, which is awesome. If this helps eliminate the garbage that's populated Super Expert for years, I am all for it. And as expected, some of you guys out there are making just some of the best levels that I've ever seen, ever. I don't know how you guys are able to formulate the things that I'm playing, but the things that I'm playing are amazing. Don't stop. You know, I will admit that the level I'm asking you guys to play that I made is not great. You know, it's okay at best. You're gonna play it, you're gonna beat it, or die, I don't know, and you're gonna come out of it going, eh, and that's about it. That's fine, that is fine with me, but man, some of you people out there, the game is not even one month out in terms of when this video goes live, and already the popular courses section of the search menu, you guys are amazing, don't, don't stop. Someone went ahead and recreated the damn sandbird from Super Mario Sunshine, this time with noticeably less pain on my psyche. There's this Castlevania themed stage that was really awesome. Oh man, I, I really loved this one. The aesthetic is perfect. The creator made this as spooky as possible with the options available. And hey, look at that. That's, it's, it's Dracula. Table tennis was already a thing in the first Mario Maker, but with the addition of the on-off switches, it feels a lot more natural. And easily my favorite stage that I've played yet, here's an adventure based on Pikmin, where you adventure through nature using your trusted... 
goofy looking Goombas to assist you instead of the Pikmin themselves. You even got a cute little helmet. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. This is also probably the closest that we're gonna get to actually having Pikmin 4, so I'm all for this. Ah, story mode, also known as Luigi, go away, I don't need your help. I love when arbitrary single player modes are added to games that realistically didn't need them. Mario Party, Crash Team Racing, every time a story was put into a Frogger game for some reason. Give me more, man, I eat that all up. The 3DS version of the first game, yeah, remember the first Mario Maker had a 3DS version? Had a bunch of pre-made levels in a single player format, which was cool, but now there's actual things happening here. By God, it's like a real game or something. It's a brilliant story too. Undo Dog held a button down way too long and erased Peach's castle, and you pick up jobs, aka pre-made levels, to collect coins, put toads to work, and rebuild it. You really want to punish the dog for such a massive tragedy, but look at it. It's just so cute. Who's a good dog? In between levels, you can even run around and interact with other characters, and take on jobs from them that don't give you coins, but other goodies, like the aforementioned me costumes. Oh. Well... This is, this is certainly happening now. Mr. Eraser, man, I, I don't know. I, I think he's a certified weirdo. I don't trust him one bit out here erasing himself all the time. Not a person you want to associate yourself with. Some of the jobs that you go through even end up adding to the actual progression of the castle itself, not just, hey, play a level. For example, at one point, Green Toad needs a cloud, so you play a very short level that requires you beat it while in a cloud, and bam, there it is. This is a really good way to experience some high quality levels, utilizing all of the tools available in the game's level editor. This mode alone, I would say, is more fun as a whole than any of the individual campaigns from the new Super Mario Bros. series. And hey, online multiplayer too, in a 2D Mario game, holy cow! And uh, it's not, it's not great. Very commendable for Nintendo to throw it in here out of nowhere and act like it's not a big deal when it kinda is, but man, it, c it can be a real laggy mess at times. Honestly, more times than not, it did work for me, and when it did, it was super fun. Just being a total jerk to these random players in these stages that you're all seeing for the first time is very satisfying. But man, I, I know it's been over 10 years now since you gave the whole online thing a shot, Nintendo, but you, you really gotta get your act together here. Now we're paying for it. Conceptually, or when the game performs better than 5 frames per second, it is at least more fun than trying to cooperatively complete a new Super Mario Bros. game, so... Hey, it's got that going for it! The rest of the content found in this game? Fantastic. This is the one blemish that could be fixed over time, but knowing how the big N operates? Pro probably not. So yeah, Super Mario Maker 2. Obviously this game is awesome, you already knew that going in. It took what was established in the first game and built on top of it with so many more things that... It's not even a contest, man. This is more than a mere sequel. It takes that original game and makes it completely irrelevant. Whether you're into creating levels, playing them, or both, this game is simply a blast. The existing styles are better than ever, single player content is a lot more interesting, as well as the addition of multiplayer content, and hey, Super Mario 3D World is back, baby! That's awesome. You just, you just gotta fix that damned online that everyone else has already figured out for years already, but that's, that's about it. And with all that being said, I think it's safe to say now that the only thing we need is Super Mario 3D World ported to the Switch proper, and it would be awesome. At that point, the Wii U will only have the energy and and the tears of Wonderful 101 and Tokyo Mirage Sessions fans. Not Devil's Third fans, though. Those fans only know pain. Oh, you see? Now that's what I'm talking about!